Hi, and welcome to another video in the R8 CSA video series. Today's video is on Configure Super User Access. So the first thing to cover is what is a super user? So a super user in Linux uh, is essentially like the, the root user. Um, so the root user has unlimited access to the system and can obviously make uh, system level changes, whereas a standard user may not be able to do that, they may be able to access fi certain files, but they may not be able to access certain directories, or they may not have access to say, change certain settings, or read certain files. So um, there is actually an option to be able to give users elevated access, and it's also quite granular, so we could say uh, we want to give users access to be able to view all the files on the system perhaps, um, but we don't want to be able to actually write um, them. So I can show you how, um, various ways it's configured and it's, it's typically configured via a file called sudoers which is actually uh, stored in etc sudoers. So first thing we'll do is we'll go in and have a look at the sudoers file. So as always um, bring up a terminal we need to be a um, sudo. So that's a good example as the very start so I log in as my standard user here, so we've got the squiggle there, and that means I'm in my uh, current directory, which is the uh, my home directory. And then we've got a um, pound, sorry, a dollar sign. Uh, so we've got a dollar sign there, so that that says that we're basically a standard user. And um, when I do sudo bash, which is basically saying uh, sudo, which is the provides provides super user access, and then bash, which is then a bash shell, so it just gives me a new bash shell with a super user, and then it elevates me to the root user, so root at, and this is the server name, and then obviously I'm still in my directory. So if I just do pwd, I can still see I'm in my home directory. So the etc sudoers directory is actually managed in here, so vi sudo, and then etc sudoers. So why am I not just using vi? Uh, that's because um, if you edit this file, you have to be extremely careful because if you um, configure something incorrectly, um, you can actually cause the system to become inoperable. So it won't actually be able to function at all. Um, so the VI sudo will validate your settings to make sure it won't actually cause system issues. It still, obviously, if you make uh, configuration changes that don't work quite right, they may not work, but it, at least it won't affect the whole system. So the VI sudo will look for um, major issues in your file and just make sure that there's nothing major that, that will cause issues. So if we do VI sudo and then etc sudoers, which is the, the file that stores all the information on the, the configured users or and groups that have that sudo super user access. So it's a, another typical config file. Uh, you can see like there's things like these aliases. I'll explain those in a bit. And you've got lots of defaults and stuff like that, so nothing to worry about in here. Um, so if you noticed here, there's one line here, root, and it says all equals all, and in, and in brackets all, and then uh, all again. So that means the user root is able to go from any host, which is all, and then run as any user and run any command. So that's literally saying that user has unlimited access on the system. You also notice that there's an entry down here which isn't commented out, which is, you know, the commented out is the uh, hashtag uh, there. So we can actually notice there's one with a percent sign, and this uh, means it's a group. So it's actually saying the group wheel, wheel group, has all access from any host to run as any user from uh, and any command. So if we add a user to that wheel group, they will automatically get this pretty much the same, you'll get the same access as root. The only difference is as root, you don't have to do sudo. Whereas as the wheel user, you as a wheel group user, because by standard you'll be a default a standard user, you will still need to uh, sudo. So you could still, you still do something like a sudo bash to get the bash shell. However, you would, if you want to just run a normal command as that user, just a one-off one, one, so one, you can just do sudo whatever command it is. 
and that will run it as a root user by default. But you can also specify specific users if you wanted to. Okay, so so I'll just yeah, just the two entries there that are important. So so we check my ID at the moment. You can see I'm the root user. So if I just close that again and just do an ID again, uh, we've got my user, and you can see actually here's the group will. So when I did the initial installation of the server, that actually one of the things that comes up is to give that user administrative privileges, and that's how it's doing that um, there. So the ID just gives us the UID, the group ID, any extra additional groups, and we've also got obviously that will group as mentioned. So how do we add a user to that will group? That's pretty easy. So again, that's we can just use the sudo if we wanted to. So we can just use sudo. Actually, let's do a clear. Now let's do a sudo. So I want to have that run as it elevated privileges. Uh, so user mod minus a to add, and then specify g for the group. We give the group name and then the username. That will then add that user to the group. So we can actually test that quite quickly. So we can do a sue as user one. I might not be able to do this user. Yep, so I'm getting asked the password for the user. Uh, let me see if I can remember the password. Yes, I'm logged in as user one. So as user by default, let's see, let's try and as a def user, um, as a standard user, should be able to do this. So permission denied. So what can we do? We can do a sudo and do the same command again. And it's going to ask you a password because we didn't specify no password and we can actually do an ls. So if we repeat that command again, it won't ask for the password again because that's, you know, obviously it's going to, it can't constantly ask the same password over and over again. It's, uh, it's silly. So we can actually just escalate my privileges as a user one user, sudo bash, and we're in as root to run in commands because we've given that user pretty much unlimited access. That's exactly what we're going to get. Okay, so let's come out of user one and go back to my own user. Let's do a clear again and let's do a sudo bash. Okay, so I'm not sure if we still have a user two, so I'll just do a user add user two if there isn't one. Okay, so I can add the user two. Um, let me just check. Okay. <clears throat> So what we can do now is actually let's do a test on the user2 account and give it additional permissions, but we will just tailor it slightly so they can only run certain commands. So as I mentioned earlier, you can you can customize that quite a bit. You can also specify the specific users it can run it as and stuff like that. So let's let's do that in, in yeah, let's do that indeed. So let's go. So I'm in as root myself, so by sudo etc sudoers and we go right to the bottom so uh, capital G to go to the bottom um, O to create a new line and get on the insert and then we just do user2 so we specify the username because if it's a username we're going to just specify it like this if it's a group we get the percent sign in front then so it knows user2 all so we, we can come from any host equals and then any uh, users we want to be able to escalate to I'm going to just set set put root but potentially you could say that user one or whatever they could run it as a specific user but in this case I'll just link, link it down to root and now I'm going to specify the commands that can actually run let's just do a, a tab so it's nice and clean so bin let's do ls uh, you have to give the full path so you can look them up quite easily. Uh, I'm just going to just write them down now because I know them. But uh, most of the time it's probably in bin, but we can, I can show you how to check that as well. So that's a valid command. So this is a valid line. So user2 from all hosts can run as root the following commands. If any other commands have entered, it will block that. So let's do a right quit and it will validate and no issues. Excellent. So uh, to check where a um, particular command is run, so we can just do which ls. 
and you can see it's been ls and you can see there's actually an alias in there which is setting the colors so when we do an ls command we have some colors color coding and that's just that little alias there so we'll just uh, sue as the user so we change the user to and now we're going to try and try the commands now so see if this uh, sudo as configuration works so let's just do an ls on the root directory is pretty easy test so permission denied denied obviously because it's not a root user so let's do a sudo ls root so now i'm going to ask for the password you'll notice they get this um message you can obviously customize that but that's just the message that's configured by default and now the ls works cool so now let's try a command that we wouldn't be allowed to run so let's try user add okay so permission denied absolutely so then they will try sudo user add user free so you can see that they're not actually allow, uh, allowed to actually execute that command you see user 2 is not allowed to execute and that's the uh, exact command it's not allowed to execute so if we wanted to give them access to that obviously we just go back do the vice sudo do the vice sudo go to the bottom and add that to the command so I'll just do another comma paste that line so sbin user add in that case it's given us already and then we can go su user 2 try the same command again and it's worked so you can see it's it's just literally um, you can restrict it down quite quite significantly there and you could again you could have permissions to say you know uh, user user one user two can only run stuff as user one for example and 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 vice versa if you wanted to and it could be like a certain groups and stuff like that you could use so so the probably the most common case is the um, the wheel so that wheel line um, most likely it's just adding users to the wheel group and you won't have to do many configurations in here so it's just that wheel command here and that allows you to add users into the wheel group and that will give them access uh, as root essentially so yeah that pretty much um, covers that there um, yeah uh, there is a um, there is some man pages on sudo so it's a, a nice read there's lots there um, I think there's a vice sudo as well yep stuff of vice sudo and just how it's how it works it's it's not too different from just vi so if you know vi you'll be okay with vice sudo um, yep and it's yeah it's pretty straightforward really so it's just getting the context of the command uh, the, the actual line correct in there that's all so you can see obviously in this sudo as command uh, in the sudo as uh, list you can already see the examples already given there and you've got like the command aliases and stuff like that so it's it's pretty pretty well built up already uh well that's that's pretty much that um as always i put my uh, kofi page on here um so yeah if you if you've got any inclination please uh, drop a donation that'd be awesome uh then i've got my T public um, for any t-shirts or anything like that if you're interested in anything like that uh, my discord page for any questions um, starting to get a bit more active which is fantastic um, as always like and subscribe if you haven't already um, that would be much appreciated um, I'm trying to reach the uh, 1k goal we're, we're nearly there so um, please help out where you can um, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video thanks again